Good news continues to pour in in the world of sports. Uh, A couple things that I think are important as we start off today's show. Report out there from the uh, Bucknuts website, Ohio State Buckeye website, 24-7 sports, that Ohio State players, uh, football players, are planning to return to campus on June 8th. The state of Ohio opening up under Governor Mike DeWine in a big way. And this comes uh, on the heels of reports that the SEC will be meeting on Thursday and Friday of this week, the Southeastern Conference, not the Securities and Exchange Commission, to vote on bringing athletes back to campus in June. This makes a lot of sense uh, in both perspectives, and let me explain why. Almost all states... Uh, in the Southeast now, are open for purposes of being able to go to a gym. I went to my gym yesterday. I went out to dinner, and I got my hair cut. I never would have thought that that was going to be such a revolutionary thing to do, Uh, but I did all three of those things yesterday in the part of Nashville uh, uh, that I live in. And so uh, the South, in general whether it's Texas, whether it's Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, all 11 of the SEC states, by June 1st, you're going to be able to not just go out to restaurants and not just get your hair cut, but your gym is going to be open. And so if your gym is going to be open in those 11 states, it makes sense to me that you would also be opening up all of your uh, athletic facilities on campus for athletes because otherwise you're basically setting the precedent of allowing the athletes in your communities to go out to public gyms and not allow them to use your workout facilities on campus which are likely to be safer and much less crowded so to me as I look at uh, as I look at this idea of opening up uh, different campuses This is an easy call. In Ohio State, uh, in the state of Ohio, everything is starting to open up in Ohio. Now, where it becomes more complicated, and I talked about this a little bit, is if you're in a geographic area where there are a lot of different rules and maybe every school in the conference can't have the same rules in place. And uh, the ones that are easy here, to me, are the SEC and the Big 12. Because all 11 SEC states are going to be pretty much open by June 1st, except for maybe Kentucky and their idiot governor. Although even him, uh, I, I think their idiot governor is going to uh, is going to allow their state to open up. But everybody else is open up in the South. Uh, and you look at the Big 12, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and uh, also Iowa – there are only a, uh, only a few states in play in West Virginia where we've already heard from Gordon Gee that he plans on playing. So the Big 12 has theoretically got a pretty easy situation. I would expect for Big 12 schools to start to return to campus sooner rather than, uh, than later as well. But the really complicating situations are the ones with a great deal of geographic diversity. Uh, let's say, for instance, the ACC – because there's a huge difference in what the rules might be in, let's say, Florida State and Clemson and Miami as well, and what the rule might be in Boston College, which is in the middle of Boston, Massachusetts, where the outbreak is much worse, uh, or certainly what the rule might be in Pennsylvania or what the rule might be in, uh, in New York because of New York City, but with Syracuse there. So all of those can be complicated because I would think Dabo Sweeney will want his team back sooner rather than later at Clemson. I would think Florida State and Miami will want the same as the state of Florida opens up. And by the way, state of Florida opening up in the part of Florida where we have our place, they are now allowing the rental of, uh, of beach places. So the beaches are not only open in Florida – If you are uh, along the Florida Gulf Coast, you can travel down from other parts of the country and now rent places to stay at the beach. So Florida, many parts of it, is very much open. 
if you can travel and stay at the beach, how can you say that down the road a little bit at Florida State or Florida, you're not allowed to let guys use the gym? It just doesn't make sense. I think the SEC should open up June 1st, honestly. And I don't blame Ohio State for opening up June 8th. But the complicating factor, again, is what happens for different states in those conferences that are geographically expansive. It used to be an advantage, they thought, in the ACC to have teams running all the way from Boston to Miami, but the geographical differences in how the coronavirus has struck are massive between Boston and Miami, and you can't expect the response to be the same. Now, out in the Pac-12, even though yesterday or the day before, whatever the heck it was, everything runs together, we had Governor Gavin Newsom, I guess it was two days ago now, uh, suddenly say, oh, we can play sports starting, pro sports, starting in maybe the first week of June. There's still a lot of difference in what's going on in California as opposed to, let's say, Arizona. But if I'm at Arizona or Arizona State, if I'm Kevin Sumlin or I am, uh, uh, or I am, uh, uh, oh, uh, whoever the heck the Arizona State, uh, Herm Edwards, if I'm Herm Edwards, I want things to be open. I want the state of Arizona to be open for my guys at Arizona and Arizona State, and I want to get back to work. And uh, we'll see exactly what ends up happening, but I think the SEC and the Big 12 have a much easier proposition. Now, what will be interesting is in the Big 10, if Ohio State returns on June 8th, how many other programs are going to be able to return on June 8th? I would think whatever Ohio State does, the University of Michigan will try to follow, uh, but the Detroit area has been more significantly hit than the state of Ohio has by and large. What about the state of Pennsylvania, where Happy Valley doesn't really have any issues at all, but the governor of Pennsylvania is upset that Ben Roethlisberger got a haircut. Did you guys see this? What an idiot this governor of Pennsylvania is. Uh, the governor of Pennsylvania was upset that Ben Roethlisberger got a haircut. Can you imagine what he would say if James Franklin or Pat Narduzzi at either uh, Penn State or Pittsburgh decided to bring back their teams and start working out on the on the campus if he's mad at, at Big Ben for getting a haircut? Uh, and the bigger issue for the Big Ten is, what about Rutgers? Rutgers is right there in close proximity to New York City, the state of New York is the hardest hit. Really, it's New York City, not the state. The upstate New York is not really that harmed at all. The state of New York is substantially hit, uh, uh, substantially hit because of New York City. And New Jersey is the second hardest hit state. So what happens at Rutgers as compared to Ohio State, for instance, or for that matter, Iowa, where there really hasn't been a very significant impact at all? And remember, Iowa started talking about returning last a couple weeks ago, uh, and got a lot of attention. Other factor at play here. Remember how mad everybody got at Mike Gundy? I wish we still had the Mike Gundy audio at Oklahoma State when he said he hoped by May 15th or June 1st to have his players back on campus. Remember people lost their minds. They're like, what in the world is Mike Gundy saying? He had to apologize. And it turned out he's going to be right. June 1st is going to be right around the date where a lot of teams start to talk about coming back to campus. And again, I keep beating this drum because I think it's a significant factor. You are, if you are young, based on the most recent CDC data, you are more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to die of the coronavirus if you are a college-age kid. Uh, John Wilner, who writes for uh, a California newspaper, looked at all the data from the CDC. There isn't a single 18 to 22-year-old in the entire Pac-12 conference footprint, not in California, Arizona, Oregon, Washington. There's not a single, or Colorado, there's not a single 18 to 22-year-old or Utah that has died of the coronavirus in any of those states. Again, in the entire Pac-12, every Pac-12 state, there isn't a single 18 to 22-year-old that has died of the coronavirus. So what are you trying to protect people from when you actually look at the data 
the safest place for many of these college kids is back on campus. 